As a music teacher with more than 30 years of experience, I'm going to tell you why I think music is one of the worst hobbies of all time. Most people that sign up for lessons say that they want a nice hobby for themselves or for their children that they're signing up. And then when people elevate beyond a hobby and they turn into pro musicians and they dedicate their life to it, they describe their relationship with music as love. And I don't see either of those things happening from a behavioral standpoint. I don't see the sweet little hobby and I don't see pro musicians that love music. It looks very different to me, which I'm going to explain. So you might be asking yourself, if this long haired dude that's talking to me doesn't love music, then why did he dedicate his life to it? Because there's a lot easier ways in the world to earn money. So for me, music is awesome and it's the lifeblood of everything that I do. It's the only thing in life that I've ever wanted to talk about or think about or do. But do I love it? I don't think so. So if we think about what makes a really good hobby, usually people describe the activities as relaxing or that they kind of get into the zone and lose track of time, which does happen for lots of musicians. And then um, it kind of also recharges your psychological batteries. And people do this with stamp collecting, coin collecting, uh, comic book collecting, fantasy football, a whole bunch of other activities. But the difference between those and music is that, for example, if you're collecting comics, you can, you know, if you're collecting something that just feels good to you, you can go to the comic store, you can read it, and any Anything that you love, you buy. You can buy that hobby, but you cannot buy the skill of playing music. You have to work for it. There's no way around it. So when somebody signs up for lessons and they say, I just want to be able to play a few songs so that I can enjoy playing music, I let them know that I've never heard of a client coming in and telling me that they sit down and they strum a few chords on guitar, or they play a song, and they sit back and listen to themselves and think, that just sounds wonderful. People just don't do that. Most people's relationship with music from the hobby level to the pro musician level is more like somebody that's in troubleshooting mode. So they sit down and they play and they're like, oh, you know, if a beginner be saying, man, I wish I could you know, change between a C and an F chord and get it clean. Um, or a pro musician is going to be looking for the next killer idea or trying to play solos that are more technically difficult or that sound sweeter in some way. And so that's what 98% of practicing is, is this kind of troubleshooting mode that is spent in a level of frustration to get the 2%, which is the celebration time when you finally get it. Now, to me, that 2% is totally worth it, and when I get that 2% of time where I really get something, it fully sustains me through that other 98% of the time where I'm in troubleshooting mode, I'm frustrated, I'm trying to get things going in the way that I want it to be. So it's totally worth it for me with that, but if you're looking for a nice, sweet little hobby, that is not what a sweet little hobby is. This is more like a grind. If I told you that the new hobby that you were going to undertake would take you 300 hours over the course of about two years just to get to the basic level where you might be able to play along with some friends that have been playing and that you'd never listen to yourself and say, that just sounds wonderful. And while you're playing with your friends, you'd probably think, eh, I'm not really good enough to do this. And that 294 of those 300 hours would be spent in a level of frustration and you telling yourself in some way that you're not good enough. Would you say that sounds like the sweet little stamp collecting hobby that you want? To me, music is a highly effective self-improvement and character building tool, and it's much better at that than it is as a hobby. This is way more like going to the gym than it is collecting stamps. A lot of people go to the gym because it feels great, they love sports, it makes them feel good, uh, and other people avoid it because it does not make them feel good. And the same thing is true in music. When you're learning music, it shows you what your character is made of. It, you, when you're first starting off on things, it can feel not humanly possible, even when you've seen other humans do it. But then when you take something that feels not humanly possible and you learn to achieve that skill and be able to play it, that builds a lot of character and gives you a whole bunch of confidence when you start to find other things in life that feel not possible. You go, well, I've learned the impossible in music. Maybe I can actually do this other thing here, like learn how to create video or other software programs that just feel insane. It gives you a model and shows your character what you're made of. A few years ago, I started to question whether or not I actually love music. And love, in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, is defined as pertaining to music as to like or desire actively to take pleasure in. 
So while that dictionary description is reflective of some of my relationship with music, it's about 2% of the time that I'm in that, you know, like actively, you know, seeking because I desire to play music. 98% of my time is struggling because I want to become better because I'm trying to improve my tone, I'm trying to improve my playing and my production and all of those things. That struggle is 98% of my time. And don't get me wrong, I, you know, I'm proud of the music that I play and that I've produced and that I practice and I'm not complaining here at all because I'm engaged highly in the struggle to become better. But what is it that musicians that have to play music, not because they love it, but they actually have to play music, what is it to them? So if I wouldn't describe the feeling of love for music for you know most people that are just compelled and they have to play music, would I describe it as addiction or obsession? There's a little bit of that, but I looked up the definitions and no, generally it's neither an addiction or an obsession. Um, and I can't speak for you know every other person, but for myself, music has been the best tool or best vehicle for me to be able to leave a legacy. And yeah, I have some recorded music that some people will enjoy after I'm gone, and that's fine. But the most important legacy to me is that through my teaching business of teaching music, I've been able to show thousands of people how to play music, and they get to take that out into the world, and they get to show other people, and I'm really, really proud of that. But even more importantly, I've been able to show, and particularly young people, how they specifically learn and how they can tailor things so that they can actually learn even faster in the rest of their lives. And they get to take that, you know, whether they do music or not, they get to take that into the rest of their lives. And um, showing young people particularly how to manage frustration when they're building character and just being along the journey of somebody that's building their character through music uh, and being a supportive person there, that's the legacy that I get to leave and music gave that to me. And I'm extremely proud of that and I'm extremely grateful for everything that I've got to experience because of music. But would I describe this as love? Not really, like compared to any you know healthy love relationship that I have, uh, I don't spend 98% of my time in struggle in those relationships. Uh, that's, you know, this 98% struggle, which I'm highly engaged in and proud of and not complaining about at all, but I wouldn't describe it as love. I think people getting into music as a nice sweet little hobby have to have their expectations reset. This is more like going to the gym and working hard because you want to get you know better at a sport and when you go play with your friends, you just want to be able to help the team out that little bit more. Just like when you're playing with some of your friends in a band, you want to be able to support your role in the team. And that isn't this you know sweet little collecting stamps and, and uh, not having to really work to get the skill. And I'm not trying to offend the stamp collectors out there. But I am very, very grateful for everything that music has given me in my life. And I wouldn't say that I love music. I would say that music is interwoven into the fabric of everything that I do in life. And I live music.